Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonin Podcast, and welcome to Star Player Spotlight, Rodney Roachbait. So, gnomes are here, brand new team for Blood Bowl, with some brand new star players. And the first one we're going to have a proper look at is a garden gnome with a fishing rod. So we've seen Rodney covered on the Warhammer community already, and now we've got access to his full rules. And this is a suspiciously useful star player. And I, I, I think this is going to be really interesting. So Rodney Roachbait, movement six, that's faster than a gnome. Strength two, edge three plus, passing four plus, armor seven plus. The rest of that is exactly the same as your halfling, exactly the same as your gnome. One more movement is very useful. So he plays for the Halfling Thimble Cup. So your Halfling teams want to sit up and listen. And your gnome teams, spoiler alert, want to be inducing this guy whenever they can. Think of him as the positional. It used to be for uh, for the Hobbit team that Deep Root was like the other positional for the team. Well, Rodney Roachbait is kind of that for the gnomes because he's only 70k. So why do I think he's so flipping useful? Catch, diving catch, jump up, loan of four plus, on the ball, sidestep, stunty, and wrestle. So wrestle, jump up is ubiquitous for gnomes. All of the gnomes have wrestle and jump up. They don't have dodge, they have wrestle and jump up instead, which always gives you a play on the ball carrier. You've got stunty, edge three plus. You can take a three plus dodge basically anywhere. And that wrestle combos beautifully with jump up. Now, this guy does not have right stuff, so you can't throw him. But jump up just gives you the opportunity to wrestle somebody down or trip up and just bounce up next turn as if nothing had happened. However, that's standard gnome stuff. This guy is, 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 is a long stick above that. So, catch, diving catch, sidestep on the ball. Sidestep, wicked, useful skill. Not what I'm too worried about here, but catch, dive, and catch on the ball. This gives you your punt returner. So the diving catch ability allows you to try and catch the ball in any square that's next door to you. Catch allows you to re-roll and attempt to catch the ball. And then add three plus, that's going to give you pretty good odds. Movement six is fast too. So you've got a catch piece here with better movement than a standard gnome so your fail case is a bit of a runner but that's not what's so wonderful about him comboing diving catch with on the ball gives you three squares left or right just before the ball lands and then an extra square to catch the ball if it lands there and it's gonna be on a four plus that's great that's your backfield covered with one player you put him there four squares to the right four squares to the left that's most of the backfield covered with your star player at 70k. But that's all well and good. He's got a star superpower that we need to check out. Catch of the day. Once per half, if Rodney is standing and begins his activation within three squares of a ball which is on the ground, he may roll a d6. On a 1 to 2, nothing happens. On a 3+, plus, Rodney Roachbait immediately gains possession of the ball. So you are receiving the ball with Rodney Roachbait. He has on the ball, which means he can mince three squares to the left or right. If the ball doesn't fall within that zone, whereupon he can dive in catch and use catch to try and catch the ball. When he activates, three squares around him, if a ball is on the pitch... On a three plus, he just gets it. So let's do the maths. That's three squares, and then that's three more squares. So that's six squares to the left and six squares to the right. That's 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 a lot of squares. That is almost the entirety of the backfield. He will activate and get a free three plus attempt to pick up the ball. Now he can activate. That doesn't work. He then still gets to go about his business oh my bad he gets to go about his business and do everything else so for 70k you get a very useful backfield person who can collect the ball that's that's cool ben he doesn't have sure hands he doesn't have great passing ability he's not doing anything absolutely special okay that's fine this guy is a toolkit piece and one of the biggest things that he does is he frees up 
a gnome from the backfield, and that gnome is probably going to be one of your tricksters, one of your illusionists. That means your front line is now two foxes and two illusionists. That's that's some scoring threat. That's some shenanigans. Rodney Roachbait on offense is going to be very useful at just trying to pick up the ball, collect the ball, start off well, start off with a bit of tempo and be able to bring that ball up. Now he's only moving six, which is fine. And the rest of your team is moving five, so it doesn't matter. That's on receiving the ball. That's one use case. Then we've got the boring use case of the fact that he's got catch, he's got sidestep and he's got movement six and he's got stunty and three plus. So he does become a faster gnome that can do stuff. Now, arguably, you're better off using one of your line gnomes and just rushing twice because you've got access to your team rerolls. But if you're out of team rerolls, that's one rush automatically and you get the catch reroll. So when it comes to it, actually, you can you can check down to Rodney Roachbait. And the fact he's got catch and movement six just gives you a better chance at scoring than with a standard line gnome, especially if you're bingo on rerolls. However, the gnome roster, whether you are suicide blitzing a fox two plus plus into tackle zones and taking a bad dot, a bad hit on the ball carrier or whether you're using one of your tricksters that this guy has freed up to wander in and try to wrestle down the ball carrier while being supported by one of your beast masters to get that guard bonus there is a very good chance okay or your tree man has thrown one of your line gnomes at the ball carrier just caused a disaster and the ball is on the ground or the gnome that you threw into the backfield has successfully run over and popped the ball out there's a lot of chance, there's a lot of opportunity for the gnome team to get the opponent to give up the ball, to get the opponent to put the ball on the pitch. And Rodney Roachbait does not care if there are people in the way. He doesn't care if there are people on the ball. This guy activates within three squares of a ball that's on the pitch and you get a three plus to get the ball straight away. And he's got movement six. That is a massive amount of pitch. You've got a fox seven squares from the end zone. That fox is not marked. Rodney Roachbait is nine squares away from the ball or whatever. He gets that free activate. Okay, so he must say nine squares away. He starts four squares away from the fox and three squares within the ball. Six squares away from the fox and three within the ball. He's on the other side of the pitch. Yoink. He casts his mast and he picks up the ball and then he hands off to the fox and on a two plus that fox runs it in. Rodney Roachbait is going to be incredibly useful. He will not win games by himself in the same way that Hack Flam or Griff does. But this guy just makes your gnome team better. And we'll give halflings a similar kind of support, but the way gnomes are built with so much wrestle, I think you've got a better combo there because that wrestle is going to give you such a good opportunity to pop the ball out. And Rodney Roachbait just ignores tackle zones from a range and gets the chance to just scoop that up and with six squares of movement, hand off to a scoring threat just awesome awesome combo um now normally this is the point where we go okay let's have a look at some model options for rodney roach bait well first of all there aren't any at the moment i'm sure third parties will come out with it i know that grebo's working on some agni's working on some the gnome team i have yet to see a third party team that beats the gnome team and i have yet to see anybody attempt a rodney roach bait so if you want Rodney Roachbait, the best way to do it, and the best model for it, <laughs> is the Forge World one. Because this model is so much fun. It represents who he is. He's got the fishing rod. He's got the ball. He's got the wicked Christmas moustache. He's got waders. It is a fantastic Forge World model. I think this is one of the few rare cases where inarguably the best model is the Forge World model. Just inarguable. Yes, it's expensive, but... It's one of those things where you're going to use him a lot with gnomes and he's going to be very useful a lot with gnomes. So if you're running a gnome team, Rodney Roachbait, the forge world model, this is probably worth going for it because he is going to be so much fun on the pitch. I love the design. He's not an auto win. 
the three range of the free three plus pickup is going to be a bit hard to swallow. But where he's restricted to Halfling Thimble Cup, it's going to be Halfling teams or it's going to be Gnome teams. And I just love the idea of this guy just giving the team a bit more juice. This is 70k and you just get more of a chance. Now, he's only armor 7, he doesn't have dodge, and he's only strength 2. So, he's really very, very dealable with. But if you don't deal with him, he's going to create some opportunities. And that just makes for brilliant gameplay. So, I absolutely love this. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Let me know what you think. And we'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy gnoming! Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.